So, could you take your seats? Okay, well, we, we will start, and uh, I have to say that we have a question which is extremely stimulating. <laughs> is international economic order collapsing? <laughs> question mark. <laughs> and we are very privileged, because to respond to this question, we have a group of panelists, uh, extremely uh, uh, diverse, with an uh, angle of visions that are complementary, very different, and I take it that uh, to respond to a question which is so multidimensional, so multi-layered, uh, it is good that we have such a panel. Let me introduce the member of the panel. We have Taeo Park. Uh, he was Minister of Trade of the Korean government. I note with great satisfaction that uh, Tadayo is chair of the Korean Committee for the Trilateral Commission. I note that en passant. <laughs> He's uh, presently president of the Global Commerce Institute of, uh, uh, and a leading global law firm in Korea, Leonard Ko. Uh, Jan Kotensen is CEO of Data Core Innovations, a limited liability company, member of the board of the Paris School of Economics, and he just published Capitalism Against Inequalities, which is a great book, I have to say. Uh, Gabriel Felbermay, uh, he, is, uh, he was the, the, I would say, chief of the famous IFO Center for International Economics at the University of München, at Munich, and he was uh, president of the Kiel Institute for the World Economy. He's presently director of the Austrian Institute of economic research, and it's a privilege to have you here. Motoshige Ito, Professor Emeritus of the University of Tokyo, has been an advisor of the Prime Minister, and I have to say I was very impressed when I could see your own personal library <laughs> with the 40 books that you wrote. <laughs> very impressive. John Lipsky is, uh, was deputy, first deputy uh, managing director of the IMF, acting managing director, and he's presently senior fellow of the Foreign Policy Institute at uh, John Hopkins uh, Paul Nitzer School of Advanced International Studies. And then we have Kiao Ide, Secretary General and Vice Chairman of Shanghai Development Research Foundation, dedicated to promote research and the issue of development. He previously was Managing Director of New York Life in China. Nicolas Véron, last but not least, senior fellow both at Bruegel in Brussels and at the Peterson Institute for International Economies in DC. And he's one of the founding fathers of the think tank Bruegel. Now, let me say that uh, we have here, and it's very impressive, I have to say, three Asian panelists out of seven. I think that to capture that uh, structural transformation of first magnitude are emerging in uh, the global economy, it was a very good sign that we could have three speakers coming from Asia. And uh, let, me, let me say just a few words, because uh, we have to be very concise. All panelists have accepted to speak five minutes first, in order to communicate their main messages. And then we could have a new round of discussion in order, again, for you to benefit from the multi-angular, multi, uh, I would say, dimensional vision that uh, we have in the panel. And then we go to the, to the audience. So, uh, very rapidly, first, many, many shocks in the global economy since, uh, I would say, uh, the post-World uh, War II and Brighton Wood uh, system and so forth. Each of these shock, collapse of Soviet Union, collapse of the Brighton Wood system, uh, emergence of uh, the emerging world, uh, rise of Asia and of China, very spectacular. Each of these phenomenon would have called for a new 
global economic order, each of them. It's also particularly striking to see, and it was uh, mentioned and stressed very, very well in the previous uh, panel, that uh, there is an acceleration of this transformation. Those structural transformation are accelerating uh, with a remarkable speed. In a way, war in Ukraine is an, illu an emblematic illustration of this uh, incredible and rapid transformation that we are witnessing. Uh, of course, there is a very close correlation between uh, uh, geostrategy and economics. Now, uh, the question, should we have a new international economic order? I, I guess that the response is yes, because checking what has been said, I could see that all speakers, whether president of the US, whether uh, president of all countries in the world, whether president of China, they all say we need a new international order, uh, implicitly or explicitly a new economic international order. So the problem is which one exactly? <laughs> which international order that is new, that would be appropriate to the new world in which we are, would be appropriate? Would, should it be multipolar? or unipolar? The response, yes again, is yes. Yes, we need a new international order. Yes, it should be multipolar, not bipolar. Not m uni unipolar, but again, which kind of multipolar? And then again, I expect all of us to comment on that. Uh, some, of, some have in mind bipolar. They say, yes, implicitly should be West, versus the rest of the world, democracies versus authoritarian regime, global north versus global south, and there are a lot of uh, implicit response on this so-called multipolar world, which in the mind of some would be bipolar. Should it be a real multipolar world with uh, US, Europe, China, the emerging world, Russia, so which constellation of different poles do we see in this uh, new world? And that is, of course, a question for uh, many, many, many countries, many cultures to respond, uh, because it's not obvious which kind of multiple of your, uh, world we, we would like to have. And then there is the real question, the dramatic question, shared global rules or no shared global rules. Taking <coughs> into consideration global public goods or not taking into consideration global public goods at the level of the planet. And uh, again, uh, I, I would say, I hope that uh, the majority of us will say, yes, we need shared rules, we need to recognize that we are in the, on the same planet. But we will see what are the response. And let me turn to the first speaker. Please, you have the floor. 